guys, it has been a full year with the Canon RF 100 to 500. And I was gonna do a review when I first bought it, my thoughts and opinions, but I kinda wanted to put it through its paces out here in the field and really get thousands of photos with it before I kind of form an opinion on it. But it's been a year and I think it's time. Stick around to the end of the video, guys, too, because I'll be throwing up some photos that I've taken over the last six to 12 months with this lens. I'll be going over things I like about it, some things I don't like about it, and some things I'd like to see in the future Mark II version. I love this spot on this small hill here because it overlooks the beautiful lake. And what more better time to be doing nature photography than in the fall? We're gonna start with the things I actually like about it. Without a doubt, the weight savings. This thing is extremely light for what it is. Coming in at three pounds, you can be out all day along the trailhead. In comparison, the Sigma and Tamron 150 to 600 lenses are about double the weight. And if you're taking a prime F4 lens with you out in the field, you're gonna feel it. This lens is perfect for the nature photographer that's going on hikes. There's days that I've been out for about 10 hours and literally four, five, six, seven miles away from my vehicle and I don't break a sweat with this lens. I might break a sweat with about 30 pounds of other gear in my backpack on my back, but that's for another video. It would be cool to spot some deer out in this field behind me, but I don't think that's gonna happen today. We do have some tree swallows that are up in the trees right here, chirping away. The size is perfect to be able to fit in your camera bag as well, even with the camera attached to it. Have the lens cap off or put it on backwards and you're ready to go. Another thing that I do like about this lens is it is weather sealed. Now I should trust Canon weather sealing. Most of the time, if it's weather sealed and it's an L glass, it'll be able to handle a light drizzle, especially around the gasket and the rear element of the lens that attaches to the camera. That's probably the most important part of the lens. I've been out in all different types of weather, snow, rain, sleet, hail, and uh, mud, dirt, <laughs> you name it, sand. And it's held up surprisingly well considering that it is an external zoom. Now I'm no tack sharp fanboy by any stretch, but I have to say guys, this lens is extremely sharp. Make sure you have that sucker tight on there. Without a doubt, this is the sharpest lens that I have ever owned, and it's sharp from corner to corner. I personally haven't had any issues whatsoever with softness, even with a 1.4 times teleconverter. We'll get into that also in a second. Man, there's a beautiful caterpillar right here. Check it out. That guy is super cool, isn't he? Not only is it the sharpest lens that I've ever owned, but it's also the quickest to autofocus that I've ever owned as well. I have paired it up with uh, only two cameras, the Canon RP, which is currently here, but also I've had the Canon R7 as well for a little bit. With both cameras, it performed exceptionally well, on, off, on, off, and it's just lightning quick with the focus. And here is one of the, my favorite aspects of this lens is its minimum focus distance is dang near macro abilities. I've gotten some great shots, which I'll show at the end of the video as well. It's definitely not a traditional macro lens, but it will get the job done really well in a pinch. So a neat composition right here with the bridge in the background with the path snaking up to it. Let's see if we can get a shot. All right, got it in the bucket. Let's get up on top of this hill, sit down on that bench again, and go over some of the things I really don't like about the Canon RF 100 to 500. Ugh. So the first con is kind of the big elephant in the room, and that is the cost. This uh, lens, guys, is definitely not cheap by any of the stretch of the imagination. In fact, I think it's about 400 to 500 dollars overpriced than what Canon should have made it. As the making of this video, uh, you can 
purchase this lens brand new for about 2600 US dollars. Make no mistake, that is a lot of money. And But you are getting L-series quality, L-series performance. I put it through hell and back the last year in all different types of terrain and all different types of weather, and it's held up strong. Very versatile lens going from 100 to 500 really quick. So another dislike about this lens that I'm not too happy with is that it will not take a teleconverter all the way down to 100 millimeters. Because of the rear element here, it stops and it prevents it from going all the way back. So in order to put the teleconverter on, you have to extend the barrel to 300 millimeters, put on the teleconverter, and then start from there. So you're locked about from there to there. Now granted, for the most part, when I am using a teleconverter on this lens, which is rarely actually, but when I do, 99.99% .99 of the time, I'm out to 700 millimeters anyways. But for the 12 months that I have used this lens out in the field, it has never had one issue with autofocus or image quality for that matter with the teleconverter on. Now that is the 1.4 times teleconverter that I have. I've never used this lens with a two times, so I don't know about that. With the 1.4 teleconverter on, it's still just as snappy and the image quality and sharpness is still great. So another big elephant in the room and con to some photographers is the 7.1 aperture. Now I'm coming from 6.3 with the Sigma 150 to 600. And what I have found is that comparing the two lenses side by side with the image quality at 7.1 and 6.3, honestly, I found that the 100 to 500 here is still brighter in low light situations at 7.1 than the Sigma is at 6.3. Now I'm not saying that this is a light gathering machine because it's not, there are times where I started to struggle a little bit at low light. Even in dark woodland areas, this lens will typically struggle a little bit at the 7.1. But like I said, to its other competitors out there, I found this still to be brighter than the 6.3. Another thing that grinds my gears just a hair, but I found it not to be that big of a deal anyways, because there's a pro to it. And that is, that is an external barrel. Now, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with any sand, dirt, mud, uh, getting inside the ex, you know internal barrel mechanism, but I know it possibly could happen. But the pro to this is that it makes it very compact when you're traveling, putting it away in your camera bag. That is a 500 millimeter lens. Now Canon is coming out with a 200 to 800 millimeter lens. Now I am interested to see how that lens compares to the 100 to 500 here with the 1.4 times teleconverter in image quality, sharpness, autofocus, all the things that I think in my opinion are more important than just a tiny bit more reach. Also interested to see how it compares to the 800 F11 as well.
So some things that I would like to see the Mark II version of the 100 to 500 to come out with. And the first one is an internal zoom. Definitely would love to see the teleconverters be able to use at the full focal length. Maybe a refresh of the autofocus for birds in flight as well. But overall, if I had only one lens that I could ever pick, ever to have for the rest of my life, it would definitely be the 100 to 500 here. The strengths of this lens outweigh its flaws. There's no best lens, obviously, because then we all would have the same lens, right? <laughs> but it is definitely one of the best lenses I've ever used for hiking for going out to the backcountry, for going out on adventures. Hope you guys enjoyed the photos. Remember, there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Get outdoors and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you with your cameras. For the next video, guys, take care, God bless, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.